My name is Ray Bowman. I've been involved in international trade for over 30 years. I'm a certified global business professional or CGBP. I'm the director of the EDC Small Business Development Center. This is a program sponsored by the Small Business Administration of the United States uh, to promote free business consulting services for small and medium-sized businesses throughout the United States. I'm also the program chair for the Southern California District Export Council. We're appointed by the U.S. Secretary of Commerce to promote international uh, exports or U.S. exports. I'm also a professor at Cal Lutheran University as well as a professor at Santa Barbara City College offering uh, degree programs in international business and logistics as well as a member of several different trade organizations such as the American Association of Exporters and Importers as well as NASBITE which is an organization dedicated to small business international trade education. So in this lesson we're going to talk about payment methods and finance. Uh, payment methods are one of the biggest concerns for importers and exporters because of the perceived risks uh, involved in doing business internationally. So before we can really focus on payment methods, we should look at the structures that surround the goods that we're trading. So it's very important for us to look at some basic finance structures. So these basic finance structures involve goods parameters. In other words, we need a complete description of the goods being traded in order to make informed decisions about what our payment methods are going to look like and how we're going to negotiate them. Things like establishing what the labeling is for the goods, the packaging and the marking that's required, what the transportation methods are and the costs. This will heavily affect uh, the amount that we're financing and the timing of that financing. Insurance. Um, are the goods being covered under marine insurance or other types of insurance? And who's covering that insurance? What are the required documents for the transaction? And within the transaction, are partial shipments allowed or multiple shipments allowed to fulfill a single order? And what are the critical dates within the shipment? What are the, the ship dates, dates to submit documents? What are the validity dates? that we've negotiated for our transaction. Next, it's important to establish finance parameters. Finance parameters are elements like the INCO terms. INCO terms are three-letter codes that describe the responsibility of an international seller to an international buyer. Uh, they appear on many contracts and, and they're very critical to understanding both the timing, risk, and responsibility we have as international exporters and importers. Along with that is establishing the delivery point. At which point is the seller delivering the goods to the international buyer? And finally, what payment methods are we going to apply based on that? Open accounts, cash against documents, letters of credit, um, these are all various types of payment terms that we apply. And we're going to talk about the four main uh, payment methods as well as uh, something called consignments which can, add, uh, which can be another method of negotiation. Time terms are very important in establishing finance parameters. All methods of payment involve some kind of timing. Uh, this timing can be, for example, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. How much time is the seller giving the buyer to pay? And so it's very important to establish that. What are the bank names? For us to be effective in an international transaction, we have to establish who the banks are who are getting involved in the transaction, who the buyer's bank and the seller's bank are. It will be really difficult in the transaction can have a lot of problems if those banks don't have corresponding relationships with each other. Now we get to the payment methods. After we've established those elements, which payment methods do we choose? There's four basic payment methods and you can sort of mix and match these payment methods within the negotiation of an international transaction. First payment method I'll talk about is pay, uh, payment in advance. 
basically payment in advance is uh, the goods being paid for prior to the seller shipping those goods. And as you can tell from a term like this, uh, it can be um, very advantageous for an exporter because they're getting paid before they deliver. But again, it can be the other side of it is it can be very risky for the buyer. So in a little bit, we'll talk about the importance of recognizing the risk between buyer and seller within these payment terms. Next, we have bank guarantees. Letters of credit fall within the category of bank guarantees. Basically, what a bank guarantee is, is the buyer substituting their credit for that of a bank. So really there's two ways that this is done. One way is through credit cards. Another way is through letters of credit, which is a little more common when we're talking about large international um, transactions. Open accounts. Open accounts are actually the most common method of, uh, of payment throughout the world. Basically, it involves the seller delivering the goods, then getting paid on presentation of an invoice after those goods have shipped. Lastly, cash against documents. Cash against documents is payment is triggered by the presentation of documents by the international exporter. Um, some common documents that may be required in this type of payment method would be the commercial invoice, the packing list, um, the uh, bill of lading, uh, could be other certificates like Certificate of Origin, NAFTA certificates. Uh, basically, it's usually the certificates that are required for customs clearance or assurance of quality um, for the buyer. So it's, uh, it's another very common payment method. And then finally, consignments. I really don't put consignments in the category of these basic payment methods because often um, in a consignment, there hasn't been a negotiation about the timing. In other words, you can have an open account 30, 60, 90 days, but consignments are these very open arrangements where the seller is delivering product to the buyer. The buyer doesn't have to pay for the product until they sell to their customer. So it's a, um, uh, it's a, it's a method that you see out there, but again, I don't count it along the same structures as the four payment methods I mentioned. And again, it's important to understand that under these different payment methods, there's different ways that buyers and sellers mitigate um, and control and manage their risk. So when we look at the whole, um, the whole map or the whole overlay of payment methods, it's real important to understand that what might be very secure for the exporter or the seller might be the least secure method for the importer or the buyer. So as we line up these different payment methods, they all have a little bit different meaning of risk to both buyer and seller. So it's very important that we look at these different methods and try to judge within our negotiation which methods are going to be the ones that, um, that secure our risk or, or, or reduce our risk but at the same time don't reduce our risk to the point of inhibiting our sales opportunities. So these are decisions that buyers and sellers have to make all the time. So if we look at the seller uh, in order of most secure and least secure, uh, cash in advance would be the most secure for the seller because they're receiving payment prior to the goods being shipped. The next uh, most secure would be a documentary collection uh, because um, the seller is basically shipping, uh, shipping the goods and presenting documents and getting paid based on the presentation of those documents. Um, probably the most, uh, one of the most secure uh, methods short of cash in advance would be a letter of credit. For an exporter, they know that there's a bank guarantee if they perform um, through the documents that they submit. Then there's open account, which is fairly risky for a seller, but at the same time, one of the most common payment methods. Uh, it's risky because that seller is getting paid based on not the delivery of the goods 
uh, but the delivery of the goods and a presentation of the invoice. And then there's consignment. Uh, which can be very, very risky for the seller because they're basically losing title to the goods by delivering them. The goods are in possession of a buyer who hasn't paid for them yet, and that buyer isn't obligated to pay until they sell the items. In reverse, if we look at what is the most secure for a buyer, the most secure for a buyer would be a consignment because they're receiving goods taking possession of the goods and not obligated to pay till they generate a sale. Open account is, uh, is the next safest because again they're receiving goods and not having to pay till they receive an invoice for those goods. A method that really evens out buyer and seller risk is the letter of credit because as much as a letter of credit is a guarantee of payment for the seller it's also a guarantee of performance uh, for the international buyer. The next is documentary collection uh, because again the seller is going to have to produce documents before the buyer issues payment. And the least secure for that international buyer is cash in advance because they're not only having to pay before they receive the goods but depending upon where the goods are coming from there may be quite a lot of time between the time that they issue payment and the time that they actually receive the goods. So it's very important to look at the balance between these different payment risks and work closely uh, between, uh, uh, between your counterpart, you know, whether you're the buyer working with the seller or the seller working with the buyer. It's very important to look at what's going to secure mutually both your risks but at the same time increase the opportunity for selling. Um, in other words, as an example, most international transactions are open account even though those open accounts tend to be risky for a seller. But the reason they're willing to take that risk is it promotes sales. So there's a lot more reward that balance out the risk that's being taken. The other thing that buyer and seller look at is ways of managing and controlling the various types of risk. So in other words, um, sellers uh, secure their risk or reduce or manage their risk on open account by doing things like purchasing export credit insurance. Export credit insurance is basically an insurance policy that's that secures against non-payment of that buyer. So in other words, if the buyer accepts goods, has no problem with the goods, accepts them, uses them, uh, but doesn't pay for them, then they can collect on that insurance policy. Um, a seller may run credit checks, look, uh, call references before they issue open account terms to their international buyer. International buyers, on the other hand, will look at uh, methods of uh, pre-shipment inspections having the goods inspected by third parties, um, verifying information from banks, making sure that they get the documentation they need to secure their risk, applying different types of insurance to the transaction to ensure performance. So uh, again one of the things I want to leave you with is there's no one perfect payment method. The perfect payment method is that that's going to serve um, maximizing the most opportunity and at the same time reducing the risk and that's different for different transactions. So I hope this is a helpful lesson in you understanding international payment terms and how they're used.